Good afternoon, guys. Hope you're all on a good weekend. So let's check out these markets, and um, it's been a good morning. Uh, just looking at the one-hour chart here, so you can see really the last um, sort of ten days worth of action. And even though Friday felt like a pretty huge down day and a pretty big correction, um, you know, if you look at it on this chart. You would, especially after this morning's uh, move, you know, retracement higher. The the, the longer term bull market, the longer term upward trend is is very much still in place. And you know, this morning's action has has really confirmed that with the market, you know, really pushing back higher. It's gone through. Um, if I go down to a, a slightly shorter time frame. So here we're looking at uh, a bit of Thursday, the whole of Friday, and then what's happened this morning. And we're already through uh, an important level here at 1088.25, okay, which was the high point of the retracement on Friday evening. It's also the Fibonacci level, 61.8 Fib level, using the high of Friday and the low of this morning. Okay, so quite an important area here, and actually. Once we got to this point during this morning's rally, you know this kind of important level has um, provided a little bit of resistance, and we've been in a we've been in a very tight range, just you know oscillating really either side of this level at 1088.25, but an important level here, and um, we've got to that point. Um, the market has yet to really push on past there, but um, still we're you know over. Um, you know, we're two thirds of the way back. You know, looking at the big sell-off Friday, which actually we hit new lows again overnight this morning. I mean, we were talking a lot on f about the events on Friday, and you know, the reasons why we sold off were due to the first of all the very bad earnings report from Bank of America, who showed a much bigger loss and a much lower revenue than we'd been expecting. General Electric was a disappointing report as well. Their earnings per share was, well, pretty much in line with their revenue, lower than expected. And this really led to substantial you know, declines. And we actually also got a bit of bad economic data with the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index coming in below 70. And, um, you know, the consumer being such a large factor in terms of U.S. economic growth, that's always going to be important, and the fact that that disappointed just added to the further downside, and, you know, I remember talking Friday afternoon to you guys, once we'd got down to sort of 1077.50, we'd bounced a little bit, and then we were ranging, we were talking about uh, the, the fact that the market is sometimes very short-sighted, and we were saying that, you know, if you looked at the whole of last week, if you took all the information together, um, it was actually a very good week, and that sell-off on Friday was possibly a little bit overdone. And uh, we were talking about we were expecting a retracement into the close on Friday, which we did get quite a decent uh, retracement back. However, right into the close, we did see some further weakness, as uh, some I guess some profit taking. Um, just ahead of the closing bell, which actually continued overnight during the Asian session, and um, we actually touched a new low down at 10.76.25. So that's the reference point from which I'm using for my Fibonacci series that you can see on this chart. And it's been a steady climb back throughout the European morning, well, throughout the Asian session and throughout the European morning. And um, it's been led by the financials, it's been led by the commodity stocks, um, oil setting, new highs again, new 12 month highs today, um, the, the new high being at, uh, let me get this right, 79.47, okay, so, you know, we're only, we're only 50 cents off an incredibly important psychological level at $80, so that's certainly on the agenda this week, I think, I think we'll have a look at $80 at some point, maybe even today. Um, but that's led the market back higher. All the European stock markets are, you know, well over one percent up, and uh, this is why we're back here. There's no, there's been no real fundamental news flow. It's just off the back of um, weakness in the dollar, and um, 
commodity stocks really benefiting from the push higher in oil. And I think it's also people just positioning themselves ahead of what is an incredibly busy week on the earnings side. We've got earnings from um, about 30% of the S&P 500 companies are all reporting this week. We've got a load of the Dow stocks reporting, particularly Tuesday and Wednesday. We've got some. We've got a load of huge companies reporting their earnings, and the earnings will certainly dominate the uh, the picture this week. That that is for certain. We do have quite a packed economic calendar as well in terms of economic data releases. Um, the housing market will be particularly in focus this week, starting with today's um, Nas National Association of, of Home Builders Sentiment Index. Uh, we're going to get this figure at 6 p.m. tonight. We're looking for 20. We're looking for a reading of 20 on that. That's been steadily increasing um, really since March, actually. March was the low. Um, and from that point, we've been steadily increasing in the sentiment survey. So we're looking for another one-point increase, which will kind of um, give the the market the information, you know, that the the housing market situation in the states is still, you know, slowly but surely um, turning around and and showing a showing a rebound. So a lot more housing data later in the week as well. We've got housing starts and building permits on Tuesday. Uh, Thursday we've got the house price index. Okay, other things to look out for this week. We've got the wholesale sales on Tuesday, PPI on Tuesday, beige book on Wednesday, leading indicators, jobless claims on Thursday. Um, so a lot of uh, a lot of data, but it's going to be swamped by the huge number of earnings reports we're going to get this week. Today the ones of interest are actually not until after the closing bell. When we have, uh, first of all, te Texas Instruments, which make up 0.3% of the S&P 500, but the main event will be Apple. So Apple re reporting after the closing bell today, uh, to give you an idea, they make up 15% of the NASDAQ 100. Um, so obviously a huge tech stock. Everybody knows all about Apple. They launched their iPhone at the back end of last year, so we're expecting a revenue number higher than quarter three of 2008. Um, uh, but so we're expecting Apple after the bell. That's a that's a very important data release. And then tomorrow, really, the earnings just we just get swamped. Uh, we've got Dupont, Coca-Cola, United Tech Corp, Caterpillar, Lockheed Martin, um, Pfizer, etc., etc. The list goes on. There's some huge companies reporting, particularly Tuesday and Wednesday. So Apple after the bell today, guys. Um, so, you know, where can we go from here? The thing is, we don't have any real fundamental news flow until that 6 o'clock economic data release today. However, we do have Bernanke talking at 4. He's talking about the current economic conditions. Okay, so that's going to be of interest. The markets will be monitoring that. We don't really have too much um, of a clue as to what exactly he's going to be talking about. I think it's more of a, just a general, his uh, general views about the current situation. Um, so it could provide us with with some, some direction, but the, the economic data is not going to be till 6. So where do we go for the rest of the day? We have already had a huge move overnight, that's the thing. And I think we've attached ourselves to this important level at 1088.25. So again, that's the FIB level, 61.8 FIB level, and also the high of Friday evening's retracement. Um, so I think this tight range we've got ourselves into, uh, I think the direction, you know, without any fundamental news flow, I think we'll get a technical move. And as if the market can break this tight range to the upside, that will, will lead to further gains back up to R1, which is at 1092.80. Uh, sorry, 1092.75. Or if we do break down to the bottom side of this range, I'm looking at the pivot as a downside support at 1085. Okay, so I think we might get a period of technical trading ahead of Bernanke at four and the um, National Association of Home Builders Sentiment Index at six. Um, but generally speaking, guys, you know, it's all about the earnings again this week. If we can see some top line revenue growth, if we can see some of these big companies beating forecasts on the revenue side, then this will 
continue the uptrend okay so i can't stress how important the revenue side of things is if we get you know more of these companies beating on the revenue side than not then i think 1100 is definitely on the cards this week um, obviously we're not far away you can see it on my chart here so big psychological level and we nearly made it on Friday if it hadn't have been for Bank of America and General Electric we could well have had a go on Friday but I think we will get there at some point this week I'm still pretty bullish about the economic earnings and um, let's see how we get on have a good day